All right, guys, let's get to some Yankees talk as we close out this episode. And we spent some time on certain pitching units earlier in the show. I am wondering, as we get closer to spring training and we move past some hints, some rumors that maybe they're still looking for an outside addition to their bullpen, what are the biggest questions when it comes to the bullpen for the New York Yankees? Well, James, I just I think it's right at the end. You know, it's the pecking order. The overall depth of the bullpen is really the strength. And you have, uh, you know, just amazing arms from Loisega, Tommy Canely now back on board, Michael King healthy again, huge addition, but probably more of a multi-inning guy. You know, uh, Magic Wandy Peralta had a remarkable year last year, and, and certainly Clay Holmes is your closer as of now. But what happens if Clay Holmes struggles? Uh, you know, how does that pecking order work out? Who's going to be, who's going to help you close out games, I guess, is the one question that, that the Yankees would have if, if they, if they hit a bump in the road, uh, they, they have capable arms, they have power arms. So I'm sure it could be covered, but you know, right now, I think a little bit of the way Clay Holmes struggled last year is kind of in the back of your mind a little bit and wondering, you know, if there's some injuries or if he struggles a little bit now, how, how does that work out? How does that work at the end of the games? Health, health, health. Uh, I'm with David on, you know, the strength in numbers and many hands make light work and all that. I think the health issue is, is key, whether it's Holmes, whether it's Marinaccio, how does Michael King come back all the way down the line? But because they have such great talent back there, I'm not worried if Clay Holmes has a setback because then Jonathan Loisica can step up. And when you have, when you're talking about I mean, we haven't even mentioned Wandy Peralta, who's been one of the better relievers in the American League over the last two years combined. So you look at a depth chart here. We got Holmes, Loisica, Peralta, Trevino, Tommy Canely, another health question mark, but he could uh, bounce back in his in his uh, next stint with the Yankees, Marinaccio. So there's a lot of great arms out there, and it'll sort itself out as long as you have enough guys posting as healthy pitchers. Yeah, I'm on the health kick with both of you. I think the answers to their questions lie within their depth. They have great depth. But, you know, the biggest questions, like what is Clay Holmes in, in 2023? We're going to find out. So some of the same health questions that James just rattled off. Like how much can Tommy Canely theoretically give you? Like what can his work rate be? Um, what can Wandy Peralta's work rate be after uh, essentially a career year? In 2022, I'm pretty sure he's going to be pitching in the World Baseball Classic as well. How does that tournament kind of affect how much they treat their bullpen guys right out of the gate in this season uh, to start the season? Ron Marinaccio, same thing. Where's Clark Schmidt factor in? Is he going to be better served in the rotation or is he more looked at as a bullpen piece at this point? And uh, I mean, again, more health questions. What will Michael King look like out of the gate following uh, a broken elbow? Um, seems like the the news has been only encouraging thus far, which is amazing. I mean, there is there is doubt that he would be ready for opening day, and we kind of learned over the last couple of weeks that he is on track to be out available out of that bullpen uh, by opening day. So all the questions just revolve around health. I think you have mo- guys that were way more than capable to get these jobs done at a dominant rate at that. But uh, but the answers will rely within their depth in terms of any questions that they may have. So I'm wondering how good is the depth really? Like, are they stronger now on paper than they were this time last year? Yeah, you know, to me, the, the overall depth of the starting rotation to me is a little bit of a question mark because of the trades they made last year. There's going to be three former Yankee minor leaguers that are going to be in rotations and in, in, on other teams because of the trades they made. Was Neske with the Cubs, Waldachuk and J.P. Sears with the A's. Though That was your depth, your AAA depth in case you needed arms. Frankie Montas goes down. Now you've got Clark Schmidt. Now beyond that, you know, where's your depth in AAA this year? I think because the Yankees did trade from that surplus of depth last year, that's left them a little bit short. Theoretically speaking, um, you know, it remains to be seen what, what, uh, who's next in line and how those guys perform in AAA. But to me, that's probably the biggest, uh, thing I'm looking at in spring training. Okay. How's that? How, the second five starting pitchers, you know, the, the top 10 starting pitchers. That's what I always look at. We know who the top four are. We know Frankie Montas is going to miss a month. 
we know Clark Smith is probably going to be the guy that's right there or potentially a, a starter in waiting. I'm looking at the next four or five guys. You know, that, that's the question mark that I would look at. And I, I'm really interested to see in spring training for the Yankees who they have, what some of their young prospects look like that have now replaced the three guys that I mentioned before that are now gone. I think they are better on paper than they were going into the season because there were other question marks last year that got answered in the affirmative. So the Yankees, you know, they had the number three bullpen ERA in the majors last year, and they always sort it out in the, in the pen. You know, they've had great bullpens for decades now, and it's not all just because of Mariano Rivera, because if you look at, you know, team relief ERA since 2014, the first year post Mariano, the Yankees are still third in the majors behind the Dodgers and the guardians. So they always have strength in numbers and really strong bullpens to get to Coney's point. Part of it is, well, all right, Clark Schmidt, if he isn't starting for you early in the season with Frankie Montas on the shelf, well, that only strengthens your bullpen. So it makes a strength even stronger, but as far as the depth goes, and I feel like I say this every other week, Teams need not five, not seven. You're talking, you like you said, Coney, who's your top 10 starters? Because the average team used 13 starting pitchers last year. And of those extra eight outside of your top five, they average 38 starts for the season. So you're getting more than a full rotation's worth of starts. More than a fifth of your games in a season are being started by pitchers who are outside your top five in starts. So you need depth in the starting rotation. Before we close out here, like think, think about that, what James said moments ago. When was really like the last time that if you're a Yankee fan, you needed to worry about the bullpen or like the Yankee bullpen did not give you headaches or odds like make you go through what the Phillies we're going through the last several years. Like the, the bullpen has never really been a headache. I can't, I can't pick a part a year out of this timeline here that I'm thinking where it was such a, such an issue. Like you have to go back, pick if, if I'm missing one, please gentlemen point it out to me. But like, I think you have to go back to like the early nineties here. It's, it's a good point. It's a valid point, without a doubt. I mean, uh, it has been really, if you think about it overall, I mean, a great run uh, for the Yankees. You know, they've been able to fill in the blanks right and left and come up with answers. Um, to my point earlier, you know, the Yankees lost some depth, obviously, in the potential backups in the rotation. Mm -hmm. A couple of young names to watch if you're in spring training. Johnny Brito is now on the 40-man roster, and Randy Vasquez, a couple of young pitchers that have kind of stepped up in the absence of, the, the names I mentioned before, Ken Waldachuk and J.P. Sears are in Oakland's rotation right now as part of the Montas trade. And then uh, Wes Neskis now with the Cubs uh, or the Scott Efros trade. So that was, those are three starters. And all three of those guys are going to be in big league rotations on, on other teams. So next in line, we'll see. I'm anxious to see those guys. I know Johnny Brito's got nice stuff. He's got a nice arm. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching him in spring training. But, you know, to your point, Shaq, you're right. I mean, you, you have to go back a long way to sort of look, look for some of those answers. And, uh, you know, the Yankees probably don't get enough credit for the type of run they've had over the last 20 years, no losing seasons. I and mean, you go back to Derek Jeter's career, um, you know, that one stat on Derek Jeter about uh, he, he, every, almost every game he ever played in his career was a meaningful game. Mm -hmm. There was just a handful of games in Derek Jeter's career that he played where it had no significance where the Yankees were out of the playoffs in 2008, like a handful, just a handful of games that did that were meaningless. And when you compare that to any other organization anywhere in any time frame, it, it is just remarkable to think about the Yankees playing meaningful games year in and year out and always in it. But one of the bigger questions, I guess, for this team is sneakily like, what is, yeah, what is the starting pitching depth? What, what is, what's it going to be like for their pitching staff as a whole? But for the most part, you do not have to worry about the bullpen for the New York Yankees. So um, good questions, I think, for this uh, this unit going into spring training. We'll see how how it all sorts out regarding health and depth. I think, that, like I said, the depth is going to answer some of those questions for the Yankees.